Hi, this is Chuck Benedict, mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon. This is the fourth video in a series uh, that I've produced that show you how you can produce a vision processing application for FRC robotics projects uh, that is um, independent of running on a RoboRio uh, so that you can design and develop on your workstation, on your Windows workstation and also deploy the same application to a Raspberry Pi for offloaded processing from the RoboRio. In this video, uh, what I wanted to do was to show you how to build the project for a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi, and then also wanted to demonstrate it actually running on the Raspberry Pi without any coding changes. <clears throat> so first of all, um, what I have here is a Raspberry Pi this is a uh, Raspberry Pi 3, uh, revision B, I think. Um, and, um, you know, it's got four USB ports um, for interfacing, as well as a um, hardwired Ethernet port, which I have plugged into my network right now. And um, hanging off of this Raspberry Pi, I have a uh, Livestream, or uh, uh, LifeCam, Microsoft LifeCam 5000, which is the same camera that I used in prior videos when I did this demonstration uh, from Windows. The uh, Raspberry Pi, um, in order to boot it up, you will need to install an operating system. And most people use a distribution, a Linux distribution called Raspbian, which I have up here. Uh, all of the links that I'll be showing you, I'll be putting in the comments section of the video, so don't worry about that. But if you go to the Raspbian link, you will find uh, two different distributions that you can download. One called Raspbian Stretch, which is the latest version. The version is called Stretch with desktop and then Raspbian Stretch Lite. Um, I would recommend downloading the Lite version because for robot applications, having the desktop just puts a whole lot of baggage uh, on the Pi that you really don't need, frankly, because mostly you just need the command line. So download Raspbian Stretch Lite, um, download the zip version. And for those of you that have not installed a distribution before on a Raspberry Pi, what you'll be doing is that on the Pi, there is a micro SD card, which is located right here, that you will need to um, most likely have an adapter for, uh, to fit into an SD slot in your uh, workstation. And you will follow the instructions on the installation guide that uh, I'm just clicking on here. Um, and in effect, what you're going to wind up doing is writing, after downloading the zip file, you're going to write the image to the SD card using the instructions uh, located here. Next thing that you'll do is you'll boot the Raspberry Pi um, by um, plugging in a uh, HDMI monitor, a keyboard, and a keyboard to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, the first thing that you'll want to do is after it's booted, you'll want to go to the console. Now, what I'm going to kind of do here, I don't have that plugged into this Pi. I've already done what I'm going to show you here. Uh, I'm going to log into the Pi using a terminal emulator. Uh, what I've installed is a terminal emulator terminal emulator called Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. And again, the link to that will be uh, in the comments section. This is for Windows. And uh, I'm going to log in with Putty right now. And I'm going to show you the steps that you'll need to go through after you install the base Raspbian image on your Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> so when you go to the terminal, uh, through an HDMI connection to the Raspberry Pi with a keyboard connected, you'll get a screen similar to this. And you'll log in as Pi. Pi will be the default login user. And the password will be Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And you'll get a screen that looks like this. And it'll tell you that the default password hasn't been changed. Please change it. You'll notice that I haven't changed it. Probably hardly anybody does. Uh, the next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to run a configuration program that will automatically be installed um, called raspi-config. And you'll need to run that with a command called sudo, B 
because you will need to run this as the root user and su the command sudo is what enables you to run as the root under Linux without being logged in directly as root. You'll get a menu that'll look like this and you'll need to do uh, you'll need to do two things. First thing is that you need to change the host name of the Raspberry Pi to something unique or interesting to you. Um, so uh, first, first thing is to select um, network options and then pick host name. And it gives you some things that you can't call the host name after you read that, then hit enter. In my case, I've called this my Raspberry Pi host. I've called it Vision Coproc, as you can see here. You can call yours anything you want. Next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the Raspberry Pi to enable it to accept what's called SSH logins. And this is what will enable you to do as what as I have done here uh, by using a terminal emulator to log into the Raspberry Pi over the network as opposed to having to log into it um, using a local terminal. And further, the project that I'm, we're going to go back to has the ability over SSH to deploy all of the project components um, automatically so that you don't have to do any of that stuff manually. So you'll need SSH running on the Raspberry Pi to do that. So in order to do that, um, you go to, if I can find it, uh, no, interfacing options, number five on the menu. And see where it says SSH enable, disable remote command line, select that. Would you like SSH to be enabled? By default, this is no. Switch it over to yes, hit enter. And it'll say that it's enabled. And then you come down and you say finish. You may need to reboot the Raspberry Pi for those options to take effect. Next. Um, in order to install the uh, project onto the Raspberry Pi, um, first thing that you should do is make sure that you can communicate to the Raspberry Pi from your local workstation. And if you've installed uh, an application called Bonjour, which was mentioned in one of my prior videos, you should be able to, from your local workstation, ping the Raspberry Pi on your network. And you should be able to do that by using the host name that you just set. In my case, it's vision coproc and then the suffix dot local. I can spell correctly. Ping vision coproc dot local. When you hit enter, you should see a response back from the device. And if you do, then you know that your local workstation is communicating with the Raspberry Pi, which is a required step for the build that we are about to run. Now in the root of the project, you'll want to type the following command. Uh, Gradle W, the task deploy, minus X test. And what the minus X test does is that it excludes the test task from the build that's about to execute. And the reason that that's important is because we're actually now building for the Raspberry Pi hardware device um, using binaries that are associated with that device. So obviously uh, any tests that we have are not going to be able to use those binaries because we're running on a Windows workstation. So this will exclude running the test step in the build. And then the final parameter is minus P minus capital P, which stands for take what I'm about to give you as a parameter and pass it to the build. And in this case, it's going to be target equals quote arm hyphen raspian quote. This whole command is located in the readme on the source code of the project that I talked about in the prior video that you've had to download to get to this point. Um, so once you do that, that is going to do uh, a bunch of things. It's going to um, download all of the necessary components for the Raspberry Pi. It's going to run the build targeting the Raspberry Pi as the, um, as the target. And um, then it is going to log on to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. And it's going to download, well, 
actually is going to update all of the native packages that are on the Raspberry Pi so that you don't have to do it. Um, a lot of times when you first install the Raspbian distro, one of the first things they say is to run an update on all the packages. This thing does it for you automatically, so you don't have to think about it. Really, all you need to do prior to this step is to just install the Raspbian image and, um, you know, do those two steps that I mentioned at the earlier in this video, and then this deploy should just work. Um, it will update the packages. It will download all of the necessary dependencies for the project. And as you can see here, this ends with build successful. Everything is now copied over to the Raspberry Pi. So now go to PuTTY, log in, as mentioned before, and at the root directory, which is slash home slash pi, if you do a list, an ls command, you'll see that a bin directory has been created. If we go into the bin directory, we'll see that we have some files here. The deploy script that we just ran copied these files into this bin directory. And you'll notice similar to the Windows application that we ran in a prior video, there is a, a command called startup. In this case, it's startup.sh because on the Raspberry Pi, these are shell uh, commands, shell command files that I've produced that will run the four pieces that you run, that we've run on Windows, but instead now we'll be running them on Linux. So all you have to do in this case is to run startup.sh And the same applications that were run on Windows will now go run on our Raspberry Pi. We'll let those start up. Okay, uh, let me take a look at my camera. Got a little blue light, so that's telling me that it must be working okay. And you'll see uh, that we've got a value of false. My ball over here, um, now you can see I'm pointing the camera at the ball and assuming I have the lighting right. Yep. We can see that um, I've got true, you know, coming back, seeing the ball. I think there's some autofocus issues with this camera as well, as I mentioned last time, which I haven't quite figured out. But in any case, what this demonstrates is that the project is working the same way as it worked on Windows, and we really didn't have to change anything. There are a few things to change, and I'm, I'm about to show you, but what I, before I do that, I wanted to go back to a web browser and show you essentially the same thing that I showed you on Windows, but now we're connecting over to the Raspberry Pi to get, the, uh, to get these image process images. So if we go to HTTP vision coproc.local, Colon 1186, what you're going to see is the image processed image, but now running from the Raspberry Pi. And so you can see the familiar uh, yellow circle on the ball that we saw um, on the Windows workstation, but now offloaded and running on the Raspberry Pi. So a couple of changes that you will have to make, they're not source code changes, um, but if you go to the build.gradle file that is located in the root of the project that you downloaded, you'll, toward the top of the file, you'll notice a section called remotes. And in particular, you're going to see host, host equals user and password. This is how the deploy script knows which Raspberry Pi host to run the deploy against or to, to push the deploy to vision coproc.local. Remember, this is the host name that we gave to the Raspberry Pi at the beginning of the video. And Pi and Raspberry, you usually won't have to change that, but if you do create a new user on your Raspberry Pi, you can change the user and the password here in this section. And then the deploy, which is located at the bottom of this script, it's fairly long, and you don't really need to know what it does, but it is here in case you do, um, uses the remotes.pyccb section from above um, as with the credentials up there to push all of these things to the Raspberry Pi. So in a nutshell, what we've shown in this video is that the vision processing application that we've run on our Windows workstation also runs the same way uh, on a Raspberry Pi. 
and the uh, deployment is all seamless and automatic for you, uh, which allows you to run your vision processing application on a target like the Raspberry Pi separated from the Robo Rio. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.